All right, so this little ditty is all about reflection, refraction, and diffraction. Well, here we go. Maybe. Here it is. Reflection. Oh, isn't it pretty? Um, so, reflection, wave bounce off a surface, bounces off, bounces back. So, not any particles do that. Waves do that. And when you have a nice, smooth surface like this without any wind or anything like that, you get a nice uh, specular reflection. Um, as a wave hits that, it comes off the same as it, as it hit the thing. And it, law of reflection, it comes off the same angle as it came in. Um, it assumes, assumes a smooth surface. Um, you, we always measure this to the normal. And remember, normal is a line drawn perpendicular to the surface. So there's the wave coming in. We often do this with as a ray diagram. It's just easier to draw as a ray diagram than trying to draw a wave coming in. There's your angle of incidence. That's just coming in on the way, on the way in. And that's this going to be the same as your angle of, re, of reflection. There's a lot of R's in this thing um, as it comes off the surface. Sure, this angle to the surface is the same as this angle that comes off over here. Yes, that is the same. But we always measure it off here because we're also going to do that with refraction. We're always measuring it to the normal. Okay? So it's always measured to the normal. All right. Specular versus diffuse. So you're looking at a specular um, uh, reflection right there. And that's when it looks like a mirror. It retains the image. Um, diffuse reflection does not retain that image, but you can see it in every direction. Um, so I'll show you an example of that in a second here. So um, the energy reflects, but not so much the image. So as you can see over here, where it's a pretty reflective, this is more the specular reflection, where you can see the image in it. Here on the opposite side, it's kind of blurry. You can't see an image whatsoever. It's gray. So it is reflecting the light, but not in any particular direction that you can make an image out of the thing. Okay, that's what the diffuse reflector. So what's the difference? Um, the, it's how smooth the surface is. Okay, so in reality, surfaces really aren't that smooth. Even these balls may seem like they're pretty smooth. Remember, the wavelength of light is really, 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 really small. So this surface may seem smooth to the touch right over here, but microscopically may not be that smooth whatsoever. So when light comes in, it hits these d jaggedy or different surfaces like so. It's going to come off at all kinds of different angles. That's a diffuse reflection. So to have a specular reflection, it has to be really smooth. I mean super, super smooth. So enough about the reflection stuff. Refraction is where the money is. Not really the money, but there you go. Um, so whenever... Um, waves hit a new medium, there's always a reflection, but there's always some transmittance of energy. And that transmittance of energy, some of it is, ref is refracted if it's coming in at an angle. So if the waves come in at an angle, um, it's going to be refracted because there's going to be a change in speed when it hits that new medium. And, and this index refraction is going to be a ratio of those speeds okay so we usually talk about it we usually only talk about index refraction with light so here's how we find what this index of refraction is it's speed of light in a vacuum which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second if you go to more than three sig figs it's like 2.997 i think times 10 to the eighth meters per second but the three sig figs it's 3.00 um, and then this is the speed on the bottom in the new medium. So you can't get faster than that 3.00 times 10 to the 8th um, in anything. That's as fast as it can be. So the moral of the story is you're not going to get less than 1. Because to get less than 1, that means the speed of light in the medium is faster. And that's not going to happen. You can get a 1. Because even in air, 
even in air, there's not a lot of interaction with light and air. So the speed of light in air is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Um, it is a teeny, 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 teeny bit slower in air than it is in a vacuum, but not much. So for all practical, pur practical purposes to three sig figs, yes, the N in air is a one because it really doesn't slow down that much. So remember, light is, it can be a wave. It can be a particle as well, but it does act as a wave. And it doesn't need a medium. It's not a mechanical wave. So but since it doesn't need a medium, it's fastest in not a medium. So when you put it in medium, it actually just hinders it and it slows down. Even in air, it slows down a teeny, 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 tiny bit, just not very much. Um, you put it through glass, water, and it's, it's much more noticeable, the, the difference. And so with a greater change in speed, so when you come through at an angle, that's going to be quite a bit of a bend. And it's a very noticeable bend when you come in at an angle. If you hit it straight on, there's a change in speed, but there's just no bend because you're just changing speed. All right, so here we go. So there it is, 300,000 kilometers per second, to three sig figs anyway, or 300 million meters per second. So here's an example of um, refraction. So something's making a wave and it's traveling. Here's a different medium. Here's a pop quiz for you. Is this medium below um, the waves traveling faster or slower? Well, they're going slower because the waves are closer together. It's a shorter wavelength. It's the same frequency on both sides in the medium. Because remember, the frequency doesn't change. When you make a wave, the frequency doesn't change when you go from one medium to another. What changes is the speed and the wavelength. So if the wavelength gets smaller, it's going slower. And since it slows down on this part of the wave, in this part of the, before it gets to, uh, slows down on this side, on the right side of this wave, before it slows down the left side, you get a little bending right over there. And you can see a little bit of bending there. The, the red represents a perpendicular line to the circular wave. And just as this red line is perpendicular to the circular wave, the whole thing bends as it slows down, coming at an angle. When it comes straight on, the red line comes straight through. There's no bending straight through. It's just slowing down. But at an angle, there's definitely some bending. And the steeper the angle, there's more of a noticeable bend and so on. So that's what refraction is, is the bending of a wave when you change from one medium to another because of a change in speed. If this, if there was no change in medium here, there would be no bending. Alrighty, uh, now we're looking in more in particular, we're just focusing on one little spot. Isn't that cute? So there we're looking, we're getting closer to straight on. It doesn't look like quite as much of a bend, but there's still a bend because it's slowing down on the right side of this wave more than it is on the left side. It slows, I'm sorry, slows down there first. So it starts to bend in that direction. And then you see as it gets further away, you get even a little bit more of an effect um, the steeper the angle. But that's what refraction is. All righty, so cars. Same thing would happen with the cars going from pavement into some sand. So it's gonna slow down hitting the sand but there's no bending because it's head on. Waves do the same thing, whether it's a particle or a wave. But this green car, because the right tire slows down f uh, first, it causes the whole car to bend a little bit into the sand. Okay, it does the opposite coming out. Um, as one tire hits the pavement first, it's gonna take off and, and bend away from the normal. So if you can imagine a normal to the surface, straight up and down, um, this thing from this normal is bending towards the normal as it slows down. If it's going the other way, it'd be bending away from the normal. So same story with um, if you're mowing the grass, I guess, from the sidewalk to the grass, or light coming in from air to the water, and that's what you've already seen on your lab that you just did. Okay, So it slows down and bends towards the normal since it's slowing down. Light coming out would do just the opposite light would bend away from the normal as it speeds up because it would speed up on the right side first bending away from the normal coming out so um, refractive index of glass is 1.5 so what's the speed of light in that glass 
Okay, well remember it's the speed of, of light in a vacuum. And since we know the n is 1.5, we solve for the v. So the v goes top on top, the n goes on the bottom. So we're gonna looks like we're keeping it Canadian in kilometers per second, I guess. Um, so the v goes up, the 1.5 goes down, and you get a whole 200 thousand kilometers per second or 200 million meters per second. There you are. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? All right. So the refractive indices of several materials are water, 1.33. Air, 1. Like I said, it doesn't slow down much. Diamond, ooh, how much do you think that's going to bend with that? Because remember, air means there's not much of a slowdown. In fact, you don't, there's not a slowdown to three sig figs. This means massive slowdown, or in terms of bending, massive bending. And it turns out all the colors don't bend the same amounts, hence you get that sparkle when you put that diamond in, in the uh, light. You get all that sparkly stuff off the diamond because it bends like crazy because it slows down quite a bit light when you enter a diamond. And the colors... Um, bend more than others. Um, we'll talk about that a little later on. Because the lowest, these, these shorter wavelengths have a little more interaction than the longer wavelengths, hence they bend a little more than what the red ones do. And so they actually can separate, especially when they're, that jewel is cut, so they come out at different angles and everything. Um, and then the water, it slows down a little bit and so on. Glycerin, 1.47, yawn. Um, through which material does light travel the fastest and the slowest? Well, it's fastest through the air, slowest through the diamond. We just talked about that, right? Okay. So this fella Snell. Um, so story is, what happened is he's working in the lab, but he's not working fast enough. So it said, Mach Schnell, which in German means hurry up because they needed a way to figure out, um, a way to describe um, how much light is slowed down in these different um, materials that they're using to make your eyeglasses and your lenses. So hence they made this Snell's Law to describe the how much light bends when entering different materials or of different optical densities. So when we go back a little bit and talk about optical densities, so diamond is very optically dense. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean it's as dense as lead. Optically dense means it slows down a lot. Water is not as optically dense because it doesn't slow down as much. It only slows down a little bit going into water. It slows down a lot into a diamond. So that's what it means to be optically dense. I made up that story about the Schnell. Mach Schnell means just hurry up in German. Okay? Um, but anyway, so um, we have this law called Schnell's Law that helps you figure out um, for one, what the bending ought to be if you know the indices of refraction or if you measure the indices of uh, the angle of refraction and the angle of, uh, of incidence, you can solve for an index of refraction and therefore identify it, which is the, what the purpose of the lab that you guys just did. Okay, so here's old Schnell's law. So light passes from one medium to another, they also change direction. Um, if it's not head on. If it's head on, there's not a change in direction. It's only when it comes in at an angle. Okay? So here's Schnell's law. So N1, sine of the angle theta, that could be the angle of incidence. Um, would just as well be. And then this could be the angle of um, refraction, not reflection. So this angle of incidence is always going to be the same as the angle of reflection. So remember, when energy comes in, when a wave comes in, some is going to be reflected, some is going to be refracted. In some cases, it's all going to be reflected, internal, it's total internal ref, uh, reflection. We're coming up on that in a moment. But the point is, when a wave goes from one medium to another, some is reflected, some is transmitted. The part that's transmitted is refracted when it comes in at an angle, but there's also some reflected at an angle. And those two have to be the same angle. This will not be the same angle unless these are the same optical density. Then these will be identical angles if they're the same um, optical density. 
In other words, there'd be no change in speed. Alrighty guys, so how do we use Snell's Law? Well, we'll do that in a second, it looks like.